Hey everyone, and welcome to the Drama Club. On today's episode, what goes around Kardashian around when <laughs> <laughs> when Tristan Thompson cheats on pregnant Khloe Kardashian, and then Steph tells us the story of Drew Barrymore in a wild and crazy tale of Studio Fifty Four cigarettes, <laughs> drugs, <laughs> alcohol, David Letterman, rehab, Johnny Cash. <laughs> And then we finish up with a quickie, a personal quickie, about what happened in Vegas and what stayed in Vegas on this week's Drama Club. Woo! What up, fam? What up, fam? It's good, y'all. Feels good, right? Woo! Right? <laughs> yeah, I know it, dude. I know yeah. it, dude. And without further ado, we broadcast some live. Sometimes I think these little like kimono cardigans look like just sloppy. Like I want a cardigan that I could wear to work. Oh, I like kimono cardigans. I guess it can look sloppy, but anything can look sloppy if you're fucking sloppy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> Did you see, you know who John Mulaney is? Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? I love that fool. That, like he. That's I saw funny a little you say that because I recently restarted rewatching Big Mouth on Netflix. Oh, really? I haven't seen that at all because you oh know I can't, I can't oh stand uh, Homie. What's his name? Oh uh, yeah, um, the douche. Yes, that yeah. guy. <laughs> I can't stand him, so I haven't watched that show. Is it good? Mm-hmm. All right, it's really it. good, actually. John- and like, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> Maya Rudolph is like a really big oh, part, what? and so Love is her. Uh, uh fuck who's the other the guy the fucking who was married to peggy from snl what's his name oh fred armison yeah fred armison is really funny and 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 what's his face john mulaney's character is just fucking hilarious well he i guess i saw a little clip of him this week on jimmy fallon and uh you know how cardi b was co-hosting it yes I, i think uh he he wanted to get Cardi B her first baby present, and he was like the Ooh. first thing that John Mulaney. Oh, so he got her a little baby cardigan for her baby, oh. and he was like a Cardi G for Cardi B. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is really cute. Um, Howell's friend <laughs> told me some tea, and then he told me that I couldn't say it on the podcast. <gasps> okay, so what is it? <laughs> Hold on, let's start recording first. What is it? No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> he literally was like, no, it's confidential. All right, what is it? One of his friends is renting a house in LA. Mm-hmm. And guess who applied to rent it? You'll never guess. So let me just tell okay. you. <laughs> Tyga. Wait a minute. As in baby Kardashian's mans? Her her baby daddy? No, not her baby daddy. The one that she was with forever, though. Doesn't he? Okay. All right. This is funny because you know that he's being sued right now by his ex landlord, right? Why? Because of a fault, uh, he defaulted on his rent payments. That's but the thing hilarious. is, he's being sued. the pr- The people listed on the lawsuit are him and his five year old son because he used his five year old son's name on the lease. What? Yes, because I, I bet he's defaulted. I bet he has bad credit. I bet well, he's defaulted oh my God, on maybe? shit before. That's what I was going to tell you. That was the tea that um he has bad I, credit. He has bad credit. Yeah. Yeah, of course he does. So he had so the lawsuit the the lawsuit was in the news because a 5-year-old is named in the suit. Yeah, that's like identity theft. Yeah. Well not not for the lawsuit but for him. Tiger. Mm-hmm. That's insane. I can't believe that. Yeah. What a well, loser. Should have stayed for that Kardashian money. Oh, he should have got home girl pregnant. Then maybe he would have had some cash flow. <laughs> All right. Anyways, yeah, that was my little side tea. I don't know if it's worth it to air it, but because who the fuck cares about Tyga? Right. Somebody does. Um. Doesn't isn't his baby mama Black China? Uh huh. Him. Her. Oh yeah. Yeah. He only has one. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say her and what's her face, but he only has one. My little camera light is still on. Does that mean that Russia is watching us? <laughs> Uh yeah, definitely Vladimir Putin is part of the drama club. He loves that shit. Mm-hmm. It's because we did that episode on Anastasia. <laughs> oh, Anastasia was Meg Ryan. Oh, really? Yeah, and you know who the guy is? Who? John Cusack. What? 
I love John Cusack. And I don't remember who else was in that movie, but I saw the the cast list and I was like, the fuck? There's so many dope people in this yeah, movie. That's good. I told you. I knew it was crazy. It might have been the other person. What's her name? Uh, Mrs. Potts. You know? Mm -hmm. What's her name? Murder, she wrote? Fucking, I don't know. But that old bitch. <laughs> Mrs. Potts. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Thompson? No, Angela no. Lansbury. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think she was in it too. She was like the grandma or something. She was Natalie Wood's mom. <laughs> Till as old as time. <laughs> Did we decide on a hot topic? Well, I mean, there's only one hot topic that we can have for this episode. Oh, duh, Tristan Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> I made us start recording late because I wanted to eat enchiladas. <laughs> oh, you had an enchilada on jelly. Officer Kraus, boys and girls. He has some very important things to tell you. I hope you'll listen to him and remember what he says. Hi, kids. You've probably all heard stories about boys and girls who got into trouble. How they went off with strangers and their families never saw them again. I'm sure your parents and teachers have told you never to talk to strangers. But sometimes kids forget. And some kids think they know it all that nothing could ever happen to them. Well, let's see. All right, so some shit fucking went down in the Kardashiverse this week. <laughs> Kardashiverse. Like, it's, it, it was so big that it even touched me, who doesn't give a shit about the Kardashians. I was like all up in this I don't give a shit thing. about the Kardashians <laughs> either, but I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And you and I were texting back and forth about it because yeah, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's so good. No, not no. It's not good. It's it's horrible. But it's horrible. Um, Chloe Kardashian, right. who is preg pregnant. Actually, no, not <laughs> not anymore because she had her baby today. She had the baby today. Yeah. Okay. Chloe Kardashian's baby daddy was straight cheating on her with like every girl in America, like except for except for me because I didn't have sex with him, but I could have. <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> Because he was having sex with fucking everyone. <laughs> so the video dropped. First TMZ dropped this video, this grainy ass black and white video, which I also love. Mm -hmm. Of him macking on two girls at a fucking hookah bar. <laughs> in, in DC. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah. Also, um, you're an athlete. You should not be inhaling that kind of smoke. <laughs> he um, wasn't, it, to be fair, he wasn't smoking it. Oh, he, he was, was just motorboating those girls? Yeah, he was just motorboating some girl. And like macking on some girl. It was kind of weird. Like, I don't know. It was like a weird vibe. It was definitely like your wildest night, your senior year of high school or your freshman year of college. Yeah, right? You know? Like, it was kind of odd. Anyways, so yeah, he was macking on those two girls. But then later, after that drop, then there was video of this full. Or the video might have came out first of him checking into a hotel with one of the girls. I don't know. Was that the same girl? Yes. Okay. Miss Stephanie. No, that's another girl. Hey. Miss Stephanie is another girl. Finish telling the story about this one girl and I'll tell you who Miss Stephanie is. I feel like if I was a hoe, our podcast would be way more famous. because <laughs> It would have been me having this affair with <laughs> Chloe Kardashian's baby. Well, let me tell you something. I am a hoe in our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's still not famous. Not famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so he was checking into a hotel with uh this girl and then they checked in saturday night and checked out monday night and then so then this other girl is separate then is what you're saying because yeah. my i thought that they were all the same girl okay well this other girl from instagram miss stephanie mm -hmm. says that she has a sex tape with him and that she pregnant yeah and i saw the sex tape what you did yeah i did <laughs> Send it to uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, at first, I was like, "Yo, shout out to Tristan Thompson," because I did. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know he was rocking all of that. But, uh, <laughs> but then, word on the street is this girl, Miss Stephanie, is a fraud. Uh oh, that might not be him. She may or may <laughs> not have never met him. She what may or may not be pregnant. What fraudulent honus do you have going on where you got sex tapes on dip? Just like waiting for like one famous fool to come out. 
cheating on a girl yeah. and you gotta find for the one that matches the most. Yo, fraudulent was- hoes, fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really sad. I actually am kind of mad. At first, I was like, it's kind of fucked up that TMZ dropped this when she's about to have the baby. And then she mm-hmm. literally had the baby. Like, she went into labor. It was kind of, like, fake. Like, they dropped <laughs> the news, and then she went into labor, like, later that night. She started having contractions, and then all the Kardashians flew to be by her side because she's in fucking Cleveland because this bull's on the fucking Cavaliers. Dude, uh, what is that? what is that one meme? The devil works hard, but Chris Jenner works harder. Yeah. Like this is this is made for TV. But I will say that I heard that after last night's Cleveland Cavaliers game, that Tristan Thompson ran out of the locker room as soon as the reporters went in, and and then someone on Twitter was like, "Which one of the reporters is pregnant?" <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, he's fucking trash. He's such trash. He had a girlfriend who was pregnant. And while that girlfriend was pregnant, cheated on her with Khloe Kardashian. Yeah. And now Khloe Kardashian is pregnant. Mm-hmm. And he's cheating on her. He's just and now a cheater. Like, he must have been cheating the whole time, you know? It's just oh, so happened that it blows up in his face right when she's still very pregnant. And I, like, I hate to really generalize. I know, I don't know if that many men listen to this podcast, but I don't want someone to be like, not all men. Hashtag not all men. Or, but. I feel like it's an athlete thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You're in a different city every night. You can hit up any hookah bar in America, <laughs> motorboat, <laughs> any hoe you want, any local hoe, <laughs> get any local hookah hoe pregnant, and uh, keep it moving. Pay that child support. Keep it moving. So he must have picked up Khloe Kardashian at the hookah lounge in Calabasas or some shit when they were playing the Lakers. <laughs> She is half Armenian. I wouldn't be surprised to catch her at a hookah bar. True. And we know that Armenians like to dress up for hookah bars because of our friends, Nane and Naira. Yeah. <laughs> One time Naira took like clubber. 45 fucking minutes to get ready for a hookah bar. I was like, what the hell is going on? In San Diego, yeah, where we weird. would ne- where no one knows us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really bad for Khloe Kardashian. I think this is fucking horrible. And I I want to say, like, props to her because you got to be, like, extra sad. Like, this is supposed to be one of the happiest moments of your life, you know? Mm-hmm. And now it's, like, forever cl- clouded by this fucking piece of shit of a man who you're going to be linked with forever, basically. Yeah. You know, she's healthy and the baby's healthy. And thank God, because that could have been really bad. Yeah, but, I mean, a lot of people... I feel like they make bad decisions when it comes to the people that they choose to have children with. But I don't know. At least I don't know what's going to happen with them as a couple. They might stay together. They might break up. But like they're going to have this kid. And I've, I just think that she'll say no matter what happens between them as a couple, she'll probably be like, oh, you know, it's worth it to, because now I have this child that I love. People always say anything. that shit. Huh? Even yeah. when they get divorced, they're like, I would have still have gone through it because mm-hmm. whatever. Now it has my baby. Yeah. And I I don't know. I've I've felt that way before about like uh the sandwich I made. <laughs> <laughs> I may have gone through a lot of shit to make the sandwich, but at least I've got the sandwich now. Don't you feel really bad for her? No, I do. Um is she is she a good person? Do we know? Like is she is she nice? <laughs> she seems nice. I don't know. Mm-hmm. She's the one with the fakest ass, but she seems like <laughs> <laughs> and face her face is fake as fuck too yeah well not i no one deserves this no but, for sure but it is you know karma though like yeah i mean you did that not that she did i mean it's him you know like he's the one right. who cheated on his girlfriend who was pregnant but i don't know because i don't i've never been in this kind of situation <laughs> But what you, like you mean? Your man problem. has you mean that you've never been pregnant while your man uh, cheats on you, cheats on you <laughs> with no. and got somebody else pregnant? Definitely not. But like, don't you think like as a woman, if you were getting with a guy and then you found out that his girl was pregnant, maybe you would cut it off? Maybe no. no I know that that's, I'm being sarcastic. Like, come on. Like, you know, like why did she get involved in that shit? Yeah, it's a fucking rap. No, as soon yeah. as I found out that, like, his, even if he was like, oh, it's over, I would just be like, no, you need to focus on that being a dad or whatever. Yeah, like, this is not what should be important to you right now. Right. Whatever, fucking loser. He's on the Cavaliers. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I like the Cavaliers. 
Whatever. <laughs> the go, Cavaliers get with, go get with Tristan Thompson then, me. No, the Cavaliers have, uh, in my opinion, the hottest guy in the NBA, Kevin Love. He's cute too, um, Tristan Thompson. To be honest, his dick is cute. If you saw it, sex me. tape. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that was like the sad hot topic. I'm going to tell you how some other boys and girls got mixed up with strangers. So we can be sure it never happens to us. Remember the story about little Debbie Vincent? Hi there, little lady. My goodness, you're all alone. Wouldn't you like to go for a ride with me? I'll buy you some ice cream. Well, nobody saw her again. All right. Okay, guys, on today's episode, <laughs> Steph is going to tell us all about our little girl lost. Drew Barrymore. Yay! So I'm going to talk about Drew Barrymore. And I wanted to say that I got most of this from an article in The Guardian by Simon Hattonstone. Also, a bunch of Wikipedia pages, like always. And then parts of her book, Little Girl Lost. And then a People Magazine article entitled The Secret Drew Barrymore. Ooh, okay. That, we're gonna get some secrets. People Magazine article. I like peoplemagazine.com because you can like access archives <laughs> in there. That's funny. I didn't know that you could do that. You yeah, could like, so unlike like, any other publication, you can't go back like. Yeah. So like whatever. this article was from like 1980 or whatever, and it, I could find it online, and it pops up in like the old school People Magazine print and shit. Cool. Felt like I was in a library. <laughs> you were was, doing that, you, you know, those old school things where you could look at newspapers, but it was like this big TV, yeah. and there was like film. What were those called? I don't know. And you like look in the magnifying glass or whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah. Ah, college. Okay. Drew Blythe <laughs> Barrymore. <laughs> Blythe. Like yes. Blythe Danner. Okay. Like Blythe the city. Um, was what born city. Blythe, bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's is that in America? Yes. What state is that? California. Oh, okay. Okay, Drew Blythe Barrymore was born in Culver City in 1975. She oh. is literal Hollywood royalty, so we got to talk about her family for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I uh, actually saw them often referred to as a dynasty, which is really old school and out of this world. Yeah, because there's so many, there's generation upon generation upon generation. <laughs> yeah, super. Okay, so her mother is Jade Barrymore and her father was john barrymore jr the barrymores mm -hmm. are a long line of actors and filmmakers her father john barrymore jr was a very famous actor and both of her paternal grandparents and great grandparents were actors including her grandfather john barrymore senior and grandmother dolores costello who was an american silent film star Wow. Her godmother is Sophia Loren. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and her godfather is Steven Spielberg. Wow. I mean, oh, I think I knew that. No, she's fucking royalty. It, yeah. Okay. So she grew up in Sherman Oaks and uh, she had a strained relationship with her father. In her biography, Little Girl Lost, she said that her father left them when she was very little and he was also abusive and an alcoholic. No. And her grandfather was also an alcoholic. He died very young and he basically like drank himself to death. Uh -huh. So she says that she used to feel really sad that she didn't have a dad when everybody else did. And she said uh, her mother worked a lot in order to be able to raise her. So she didn't see her mom that often either growing up. Damn. She started acting almost immediately as she starred in commercials as a baby. Mm hmm. Her first major role was in E.T. in 1982 at the age of seven, and mm -hmm. its gigantic su success catapulted her into being a huge child star. She's also the youngest person to ever host SNL at age seven. Wow. Yeah. Um, when I was doing this research is when I was like, have you seen the movie Ever After? Because I got to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I forgot. About, I always forget about it. And I love that movie. It's really cute. I guess I should have prefaced this by saying that her life isn't necessarily too dramatic. I just like wanted to do something lighthearted because we had Natalie Wood last week and that was kind of heavy and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and she's fucking fun and I really like her. Okay, so I also want to say that her acting career is fucking gigantic. So I'm not going to mention every single fucking movie she's <laughs> been in. <laughs> just mostly the ones that are super important and that I happen to like a lot. 
Okay. So she was in a shit ton of movies as a kid, and uh, it didn't work out so well for little baby Drew. She ended up being a regular at Studio 54. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, that sounds awesome to me. Sounds like she's killing it. As a kid, and like, I mean, like, she was fucking nine years old at Studio 54. Yeah. <laughs> so her party timeline flows like this. Okay. She smoked cigarettes at the age of nine. Okay. Drank alcohol at age 11. Smoked marijuana at age 12. And snorted cocaine at age 13. Oh, no. Drew. That's, <laughs> that's too much. <laughs> that's way too much. That's too much. No. Yeah, age nine, I was like barely starting to not no. wet the bed. <laughs> well, let me, let me tell you. When I was at Studio 54 when I was 10, it was... <laughs> you had a diaper on i had a diaper on but i wasn't i wasn't snorting cocaine though. right the pictures of her in the at the club are really weird like <laughs> she's like a little girl in like 80s gear dancing and shit yeah <laughs> sweet dreams are yeah, made yeah, of you totally see her going back and forth in that 80s motion in your head in that 80s motion <laughs> you know that one 80s movie yeah, that yeah, the has. shoulders yeah yeah Okay. I can do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. So apparently her mother was the first person to take her to Studio 54. Okay. I'm a cool mom. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> fuck. You're something. <laughs> Drew said that her parents were wild as fuck and they drank a lot and they didn't really know how to raise her. Uh, she went out partying with her mom and her mom's friends at the age of eight. Oh. Her okay. mom in uh, this People Magazine interview that I read says something like, where was I? I know it's weird, but I felt like I had to give her time and space around age nine. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Driven. Wow. Um, yeah, seriously. Um, in the People Magazine article, Drew Barrymore talks about how bizarre it was to be such a young little girl and be able to walk into a nightclub where no <laughs> one would ask her questions or ever ID her or anything like that. <laughs> right. She, she probably said, had a fake ID. <laughs> <laughs> she was like nine and she was like, oh, yeah, she has to take a VHS of E.T. around with her to get her into clubs. <laughs> she says she had no friends her own age and everyone around her was older, which obviously, like we were talking about Natalie Wood, that's what happens when you're in this kind mm -hmm. of an industry. So that's just how she kept getting into more and more things. Like at one point, someone handed her a cigarette, then mm -hmm. some alcohol, and then she was like, well, let me just try the weed. And then everybody was like, oh, how cute, a little girl smoking weed <laughs> instead of like fucking helping her and guiding yeah. her away from it. So it just kind of like ballooned off each other. Okay. It's a slippery slope. It's a very slippery slope at Studio 54. Andy Warhol was there. Oh, actually, Andy Warhol might have been dead already. Yeah. Okay. So her nightlife and constant partying became a very popular source with the media. There's a video of her in an interview with Johnny Cash at age eight, which is really weird. Have you seen it? No. So she's like starting to lose her baby teeth. So she has like those pageant teeth, you know, that they put oh, on yeah. them. Flippers. Yeah, she has like those flippers. And like as soon mm -hmm. as she sits down with him, she takes them out of her mouth and puts them on his desk. And she's really funny and she's really flirtatious with him. Wait a minute. Johnny Cash? I'm sorry, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Did okay. I say Johnny Cash? Yeah, you said Johnny sorry, Cash. I, I wrote like... Johnny Carson. <laughs> so it's really weird and odd. Oh, no, I don't like this. Yeah. So obviously she went into rehab at the age of 13 mm -hmm. <laughs> for something like two weeks. Oh, okay. Was this, do we know what rehab was at Betty Ford? It no, Betty I don't Ford. think it was. And then after two weeks, her parents took her out so she could film a movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Great parenting. Right. So obvi then obviously she relapsed and she went right back into rehab. Yeah. Um, in her People magazine article, she says that she would yell at her mom all the time and fight with her mom all the time. She'd sneak out of the house. She'd steal from her mom money and like credit cards and stuff. And then she also tells this really great story, <laughs> great and scary story about uh, this one time when she was 13, when her and her friend stole her mom's BMW and drove around Hollywood with a gram of Coke on the dashboard. What? Yes. <laughs> what? Why? Why would they do that? Because they're fucking 13 years old and they're oh stupid. Oh my God. Yes. Well, I'm not advocating the use of cocaine, but if you are using cocaine, wouldn't you be scared that you would lose it if it was on the dash? <laughs> <laughs> no, she got that ET money. She's good hey, to go. Did you see? There was a story in the news today about this woman. I want to say she was, a fl she was from Florida. 
but like she there was a woman who got arrested for uh, a possession of cocaine and she claimed that the wind blew it into oh, her purse yeah, that was amazing and the world the, all, all the internet was going wild like yeah. god bless this girl <laughs> that was uh that was true barrymore <laughs> <laughs> okay so later at the age of 14 she spent 18 months in an institution for the mentally ill um what how many months 18 18 months that's crazy right jesus christ yeah i didn't know about this so in this article in the guardian she talks about the institution and how she was really at the lowest point in her life then and her mom put her institution in in the institution without her knowing uh like she didn't know she was going there it was kind of like an intervention type of thing yeah okay um she said that she did feel like it was kind of like a boot camp like it was very structured and there they got a lot of therapy and it kicked her into a sense of normalcy okay well all right well they should have done that from the fucking the well it, it never should have happened yeah they you should <laughs> you really shouldn't i mean i'm not one to give parental advice because i don't have kids but yeah. i gotta say you probably shouldn't take your kid to studio 54 you know what i mean i i might because <laughs> you gotta make sure your kids have a good foundation that they know all the great donna summer songs right and i feel like you gotta go to studio 54 to get a real sense of that mm, okay if anybody has the number for social services please send it my way <laughs> because when may has children i'll have to call them up. <laughs> okay so this was tremendously sad for drew who at this time is a really young girl um and she already went through like a lifetime of difficulty at 14 and she really put herself out there because she wrote that book little girl lost about this time in her life and she publicly spoke about all of her troubles and that's why we all know all this stuff because she was really vocal about it and used it as a way to try to get other kids her age not go down the path she did and i'm really respect that i think it's super powerful that's cool so she wrote the book as soon as she got out of the institution I'm not too sure, but I think she did. Yeah. Because she's there's like pictures of her as like a young girl promoting it and stuff. Yeah. So she was super strong even at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, so Drew Barrymore said that that institution she stayed in suggested for her to emancipate herself from her parents. <gasps> okay. Yeah. They thought that she would be better off in the real world just on her own. So yeah. after a successful juvenile court petition for emancipation, she moved into her own apartment at the age of 15. Okay, you know what? I tr- I trust Drew on this. Like yeah. she's been li- she's been living in the adult world her whole life, basically, and her parents sure as shit aren't parenting her. Right. So m- well, might as well try something weird different. That like I feel like a lot of uh, who like her persona is kind of like highlighted by the fact that she's a Barrymore, like that she's of mm-hmm. this Hollywood dynasty. But then when I was reading all this. I didn't realize that she has like a horrible relationship with her dad who gave her her name, which like, you know, is part Mm -hmm. of who she is. Right. I guess Mm -hmm. that's for everybody, but I'm just saying like, especially for her because she's in the acting world. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. So she stopped getting roles at this time and auditions and everything tarnished her image big time uh, because Hollywood sucks and that's what they do. Instead of embracing and helping her, they kind of turned their back on her. So oh, no. in The Guardian, she said, uh, to have such a big career at such a young age and then nothing for years, it's a tough trip to have by the time you're 14. Wow. So, yeah, she, said that that, yeah, so she said that that time when uh, she left her mom and moved into her own apartment was really monumentally humbling. And she worked in restaurants to support herself while she tried to break back into the acting world. Mm-hmm. So from 14 to 17, she really didn't act and slowed down worked on herself and then by the age of 17 she had a comeback baby wait does she so she didn't she wasn't in high school or anything no oh okay i wonder about that but no and i didn't even look into it huh okay go on all right so in 1992 she was in the thriller movie poison ivy oh yeah and she played the role of a sexy trashy teenager yeah (laughs) that's how it's been described this movie, Poison Ivy, is a lot like, if I'm remembering correctly, it's a lot like that movie, The Crush. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. Alicia Silverstone in the 90s. Yo. Yeah. We need to have a 90s Bay folder in our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got to do Alicia Silverstone, May. Mm, yeah, but she, like, 
I get mad at her because she was one of the youngest women in history to get like a multi movie deal from a studio. Like they gave her like, they gave her like 12 after Clueless came out, they gave her like $12 million to produce three films. Uh Um, that was like her producer's fee. Mm -hmm. And like, all, and I think that she made like two terrible movies. Yeah. And then they cut what else is she? She was in excess baggage. Oh yeah. That was like the second one. The second in the trilogy that she was supposed to make, I don't remember what the first one was, and then she after that, the last studio was past like, nah. with uh, Brandon oh, Fraser with Bay with my Bay, super uh, Bay, Mummy yeah. Bay, Actually, and Christopher Walken is in that. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so I I'm mad at Alicia Silverstone because she like squandered the opportunity. You know, I don't yeah. know. Okay, so within the next six years, she... Oh, she was in those bomb Aerosmith videos, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That could That's what your episode could be. It could just be a play-by-play of all the Aerosmith <laughs> videos that Alicia Silverstone was in. <laughs> all right, go on. Okay, so um, within the next six years, she would be in 16 films. Mm. Yeah, so she really came back hard. Wow, yeah, for her. In the 90s, her career really took off and she was a superstar. She was still seen as a rebellious girl and she did take on roles that were kind of, quote, bad girlish. Mm-hmm. And you talked about her starring as the Long Island Lolita in that one movie. Yeah. So the Amy Fisher story. Right. So that's like the kind of vibe she was in at that time. <laughs> yeah. Um, in January 1995, she posed nude for Playboy magazine at the age of 19. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing an article, uh, a little interview of her at the time. And they were like, why'd you do it? And she was like, because when I'm 60 years old and my tits are at my knees, I can look at this and remember how hot I was. Or something <laughs> like that. It's really That's cute. Right. She has like fucking daisies in her hair and shit. You know how she was. D- did she ever not have daisies in her hair? No, like dude. in the 90s? I think I tweeted night. this that like Drew Barrymore is the only person who could wear a flower crown and I won't fucking roll my eyes at her. Yeah. Yeah. She was definitely born with a flower crown. Like it's so authentically her. Yeah. Um, so famously her godfather, Steven Spielberg, for her 20th birthday, gave her a quilt of pictures of herself from Playboy edited to have clothes on. <laughs> what? A, with, I didn't know this. With a letter that said, cover yourself up. Fuck you, Steven Spielberg. Oh, yeah. Asshole. Fuck you. On March 20th, 1994, she got married for the first time at age 19 to a bar owner named Jeremy Thomas. <laughs> oh, J- Jeremy Thomas, you married into a Hollywood dynasty. <laughs> right? A bar owner, too. Come on, Drew. Uh, she filed for divorce one month later. Whoa. Yeah, okay. That, that worked out she pretty gave, well. She gave it the good old college try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was at a club at eight, so it makes sense yeah. that, she, like, it was actually kind of sensible that she waited until 19 to get married. Yo, I just realized, okay, our girl Drew Barrymore married at 19. Our girl Natalie Wood married at 19. Mm. Our girl Elizabeth Taylor married at 19. And Nicole Smith. Really? Yes, her first oh, marriage yeah, that's like right. 19. That's some fried chicken dude. Yeah, fried chicken man. Yo. Yeah. Is this the cool girl? The mark of the cool girl? This the um the twenty seven club of of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, around this time, she went on the Late Show with David Letterman and got up on his desk, danced for mm-hmm. him, and then flashed him her boobies because it was his mm-hmm. birthday. Aww, yeah, how thoughtful of her. Yeah, it's a really funny, cute little video too. Yeah, I love her at this time. I think she's so f- like you know just like free and fucking yeah. having a good time and. Mm-hmm. She's just always giggling and smiling and shit. Yeah. Um, and she also did a guest jean campaign, which is really cute and super 90s. <gasps> I don't remember this at all. They're really cute. We'll have to Instagram some pics because she has on this great choker with a huge cross and really heavily lined lips a la <laughs> Pamela Anderson. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> a la every chola. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, for whatever reason, I really like that look on blonde girls, though, like on white girls. Really? Yeah, because it's only it's a particular kind of blonde girl that would do that. Mm, Yeah. Okay. So she was in some huge blockbusters in the 90s too, including Batman Forever, Scream, and The Wedding Singer, which is one of my favorites also. Let me tell you something about Batman Forever. (laughs) (laughs) Is Alicia Silverstone in Batman Forever? Yes, she is. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Alicia Silverstone is in Batman and Robin. Whack. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> Batman Forever 
is fucking good. Batman Forever has the greatest song in the history oh. of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss, Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Hell yeah. And that music video is incredible because it's like this it's this love song and like you know it's seal like with the wind and his silk ass shirt and it's like love scenes with nicole kidman and val kilmer and then all of a sudden they'll cut it with like clips of batman doing back backflips and shit <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i love batman forever Come i love on. that song no, yeah. Oh, actually, and this might be Batman Forever might be Jim Carrey's greatest role, the the role he was born to play. Seriously, the Riddler? Yeah. Yeah. That was a Yeah. He's annoying kind of. <laughs> He's so annoying. I don't I only like his dramas, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. I love um, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, come on. That's probably the one Truman of my favorite show. movies. Oh, the Truman Show is really good too. Yeah. You know, I barely saw the Truman Show like last year whoa you're missing ever? out yeah i had never seen it and halal was like oh the truman show i was like oh i never seen it he was like what let's watch it yeah it's so good truman show is good i like literally i only like him when he's when they try to like reel him in a little bit yeah <laughs> i feel bad like for him because he seems to have uh depression issues right he seems to have something going on with him and his girlfriend killed herself right. with his pills right yeah it's very sad um Actually, the the one comedy I think I like him in is uh I like Liar Liar. Oh really? I I don't remember it. I mean, I it has that one cool ass girl with a deep voice. What's her name? Who? She's his ex wife in the movie. I don't remember. Oh, she's very nineties. She's in like the she's in like those Kevin's uh whatever movies too. Kevin. Oh, Kevin Smith. Yeah. Is um, she Amy? Oh, uh, oh, what's her name? Jennifer Tilly. We weren't we just talking about Jennifer yes. Tilly? Yeah, what happened to her? She's uh, you know, she's like in she's one of the top poker players in the world. What? Like, <laughs> yeah, like she's like in the World Series of Poker and shit. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so random. <laughs> yeah, I know. I okay. like her actually. Yeah, she's really cool. Okay. Um what is what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about ba she was in Batman Forever. She was in The Wedding what was Singer. He, the Wedding I Singer. I love The Wedding Singer and that's her first of the Adam Sandler saga. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um oh, and at this time she was in that movie Ever After which I love which y'all need to watch is about Cinderella. It's so fucking romantic. It's going to make you want to mac on somebody and get married and shit right a horse. And <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Queen Angelica Houston is in it. Yeah, that movie's so good. Who's uh, the who's the prince or whatever? Oh, I don't know. He's fine as fuck though, and he's wearing these tights, and you can see his butt. Oh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a a butt girl though. You're I not. No, I do like a thigh. That's like why you don't like Kowal. Kowal has a fine ass. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I will. Doug, Doug Gray Scott is his name. <laughs> Doug Ray Scott? Yeah, what the fuck else is this for? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he was in Desperate Housewives, apparently. Whatever. All right. <laughs> okay. In 1995, Drew and her friend Nancy Javanen started a film production company, Flower Films. Flower Films. Their yeah. first movie is 1999's Never Been Kissed. Oh, you know who's in that? Which was a huge commercial success. Uh, oh, no. James Franco? Oh, James Franco's in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Who else? Well, who uh, are you going to say? I was going to say, but then I realized that it was wrong. Oh. I was gonna, I was going to say, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bay from Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, uh, no. He's in Luke Wilson. movie with her, Home Fries. Home Fries. And yeah, that's, that's around this time, up. too. Maybe a little okay. bit earlier. Um, oh, yeah, he's fine. No, the uh, male love interest in Never Been Kissed is Michael Varton, which is, who is super cute. Vartan, that's um, that's uh, Jennifer Garner's ex-husband. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's French, which I didn't know. He's French. Yeah, that's okay. weird, right? I yeah. mean, it's not weird. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed he was from like fucking Newport or whatever. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. And everybody loves that movie. It was a huge commercial success. Josie Grossi. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Um. Fun fact. Bloop. Nancy mm -hmm. Javanin is married to Jimmy Fallon. 
Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In in that Guardian interview, Drew Barrymore says that her 20s were a blast and she was working really hard but partying really hard too. And she really Mm -hmm. couldn't believe how her life had turned around. Around this time in her life, she said, oh, no, about this time in her life, she said, I really lived and I did what I wanted when I wanted to. If I felt like doing something, I just did it, which is pretty liberating. I had lots of fun. I bet she did. Yeah, she looked like she was having a fucking good ass time. And she did work hard because she was in a shit ton of movies. Yeah. So good for her. Um, In 1999, she dated and then briefly married Canadian comedian Tom Green (laughs) during the peak (laughs) of his fame. (laughs) He's the worst person. (laughs) Why? Just, uh, could you, oh. I don't think he's the worst. He's the worst. He did all that stuff for cancer after he had, he found out that he had cancer and stuff. Well, la di da, like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you did something good for something you suddenly found yourself tied to, like no. But what, whatever. What is bad about? He's gross, but I don't think he's, he's a gross. dick. Is he? No, I I don't know if he's a dick or not. He's probably not a dick. He's probably a lovely person, but he just seems like the most annoying. Could you he imagine spending? Like, like, fuck, remember the intro whole- to his show? It was like, "This is the this Tom, is Tom Green, Green show. show. It's not the Green Tom yeah. Tom." Did, and you know what's funny is like at this time I was probably like in middle school high school and everybody who fucking liked him I fucking hated like they were all annoying yep. like that too that's about right yeah anyways they seem to have fun <laughs> with each other yeah <laughs> he was like, in Charlie's Angels yeah that's how she met him oh what that's how she met him mm-hmm. he oh was, I he thought I thought like she threw him in that movie because they were dating mm-hmm. she was like oh you know whatever you that's want this little, you want this checkbook <laughs> <laughs> throw your man a bone uh she's uh, a power is a power move and i like it <laughs> <laughs> so they would mess around with the press about uh, when and where they were going to get married if whether or not they were already married and whether or not she was pregnant um and so they were together for a total of like three years including their engagement marriage and then divorce wow yeah okay all right so now we hit the millennium and Drew was in the 2000s. The Willennium. <laughs> <laughs> the Drewlennium. Every time I think of the Millennium, I think of that Backstreet Boys cover. Oh, yeah. Where they're all in silver at the airport. Yeah. Hell yeah, baby. I want it that way. Okay. So she's a well-respected Hollywood sweetheart. She kicked off the 2000s with the first installment of the Charlie's Angels movies, which were very, very famous. I also fucking love these movies. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. They're and so good. I saw them rec- I saw one recently. I saw one recently too, and it just it's fun. They're like so do, fun. don't take it too seriously. Oh. Just like have fun. They're all they all are dressed fucking great. Like they had great stylists for each of them. Mm-hmm. The songs are all really fucking good. Mm, Destiny's like, Child. Yeah, they have like really good Oh, I love that Destiny's Child mm-hmm. song Independent Women. The fight scenes are solid. I mean, you know. They're okay. Yeah, it's fun. I, I think if they were done today, the fight scenes would look better. Maybe they would train the girls harder or Probably, something. I yeah. don't know. But still, I mean, it was t- totally good movies. What's his face? Remember we were talking about this? What's his face? Is it Sam Rockwell? Yeah, he's the protagonist in the first one. And he yeah. maxed on Drew. And he's fucking cool in them. Um, also, the Charlie's Angels films were produced by Far Films, which I did not know. Mm, yeah, I think I knew that. I think uh, it was. Know- Go ahead. I have a I have a bone to pick with that Destiny's Child song that I've never been able to shake. You've never picked. Uh, <laughs> Take that bone, me. The beginning of that song where where they're like Lucy Lou and my girl Drew, Cameron D and Destiny. Like they, I always feel like they when they would play it on the radio or something, they would always bury Lucy Lou's name. Like, cause they would, you know, the DJ would be talking and then the, the song would come in and they would be like, and my girl drew. And then I always felt bad for Lucy Lou. Oh man. Don't feel bad for Lucy Lou. She's badass. Yeah. She's dope. I fucking love her. This was kind of like a way for her to get the roles that she really wanted to. Like, that's part of the reason why she started the production company because mm-hmm. she was kind of over being the quote bad girl. And she didn't really need to keep distancing herself from her childhood at this point. Right. It was like comfy doing the rom-com fun movie thing which seems Mm -hmm. more like her genuine personality and i feel like when when these movies were coming out like i i rarely have ever thought of drew as the little girl from et right no neither i i thought of her as these like these characters in the rom-coms yeah i think that she she did a really good job of escaping that image i think yeah she did she didn't like 
she did it kind of like in that's what i'm saying like i feel like she's so authentic like it doesn't seem fake to me her personality mm-hmm. like the way she acts and stuff whereas like other people when they try to distance themselves from whatever you know like their childhood thing it seems fucking fake like when my Miley Cyrus, Cyrus pulled that shit and she was tr- mm-hmm. trying to like twerk and shit like it was just you're doing too much like you're trying yeah. too hard you know mm-hmm. yeah Anyways, okay, so in 2002, she began what would be a five-year relationship with Fabrizio Moretti, who is the drummer for The Strokes. Oh, my God. I forgot about this. He's a super dreamy, dark, curly-haired rock star. Good Mm -hmm. for her. Yeah. Side note. I like like them as a couple. Oh, yeah, they're the best. Pictures of them together are fucking cute. He, like, he seems like a good lover because he grabs, (laughs) like, her face with both hands when he's macking on her. And unfortunately, he does that with all the women I see him with. Oh no! Yeah. Well, so, my- side note: he went. He then went off and dated Kristen Dunst and Kristen Wiig, which is fucking weird to me. <laughs> um, what did he dated two Kristens? No, I just feel like uh, Kristen and Kristen probably only dated him because they knew him from dating Drew, not from actually being oh. like the drummer of the Strokes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I want to say that uh, Kristen Wiig. I saw her do a Drew Barrymore impression after she was dating Fabrizio, and <laughs> I felt like that was. Oh, like maybe that was shady. Like, just don't do that. You know, Kristen I know. wish she was Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a I have a Kristen Wiig story. Okay, let's uh, hear it. One time, my uh my dog ran into my front yard, which she never did ever. And like, she ran into the front yard, and there was a couple, a man and a woman, standing outside walking. And she went right up to them, and then like I ran after her. And I was apologizing profusely because she was like kind of like talking to them and like jumping on them. And the woman turned out talking to them. Yeah, Lola was talking to them. (laughs) And then and the woman turned out to be Kristen Wiig. Oh shit. Yeah, it was cool. Who was she walking with? Some fine ass man. Ooh. Like one of the finest men I've seen in real life. Really? (laughs) Yeah. I'm surprised you even were able to notice that it was Kristen Wiig. Oh, yeah, because I was real concerned about the dog, you know, so I was like looking down and then I looked up and it was her and I was like, oh, cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so Flower Films also produced Donnie Darko, 50 First Dates, which is her second film alongside Adam Sandler. That one's okay. That one's so cute. I love that one. Mm-hmm. Fever Pitch, He's mm-hmm. Just Not That Into You, and on and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. So I heard that Fever Pitch, which she stars in with Jimmy Fallon, is how Jimmy met her homegirl, Nancy. Oh, cool. The tea is that Drew invited Jimmy to a birthday party that she was throwing for her homegirl, Nancy, and it all kind of led to them getting together. Okay. Yep. She's a good wing woman, too. <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fever Pitch is also great because it's about Jimmy's character being a crazy Boston Red Sox fanatic mm-hmm. and how they have the curse of the Bambino and shit and they never win. Um, and in the film, they originally had planned for the Red Sox to lose again, like they always did. Mm-hmm. But in 2003, the year that it was filmed, the Red Sox fucking broke the curse and won the World Series. So they were able to put that all in the movie and it's super climactic and fun at the end. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really good luck that they did it that year, you know? Yeah. Um, Okay. So in 2004, Drew Barrymore's father, John Barrymore, passed away. R.I.P. He suffered from cancer, and Drew Barrymore paid for him to live close to her the years before his death and paid for Mm -hmm. all of his medical bills, even though they were very estranged at this point. All right, she's a decent person. Yeah, and just a side note, um, she's also pretty much estranged from her mother as well, who she says that she rarely speaks to. Wow, okay. Yeah, I read this really sad thing um, in an article like from like very recently where she said for a long time it was hard for her to come to terms with what kind of relationship she was supposed to have with her mom um, because... You know, because her mom fucking blurred the lines since she was a little girl. Yeah, you know? her mom is problematic because like... Yeah, exactly. Like she blurred the lines and then Drew kind of saw her as like a party friend. And then after Mm -hmm. that, she fucking emancipated herself from her mom. So it's just kind of, I can't imagine, you know, having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. In 2005, she was in the HBO film Great Gardens alongside Jessica Lange to huge success. Yeah, she was good in this. Yeah, it was really good. It won five Emmys and two Golden Globes. 
she said that this is the only time that she's ever stretched herself as an actress, which I really like because she admits mm -hmm. that she really only plays roles that are close to her personality. So we saw her as a rebellious teenager when she was a fucking rebellious teenager. And then as a fun, loving young adult, when she was a fun, young, young, loving adult, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she said that she had a really hard time getting this part on Great Gardens because they were like, no, 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 not the rom-com girl. <laughs> and so she said she really had to prove herself. Yeah, and you got to nail this accent, yeah. and like this is this is a character that a lot of people know, a real person. Yeah, you know. have you ever seen the original HBO documentary? Is it HBO? No, it's not HBO. It's uh the I want to say they're the Lumiere brothers. Have you seen it? Ooh. Hell yeah, it's one of the great documentaries of all time. I gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. It's the Maisel brothers. Oh, okay. and they are, and it's these people are fucking insane like they're well, I mean, I've crazy seen her guard. like i've seen that one okay yeah it's just it's so weird to see real people yeah i don't know when i when i was in the hamptons like i was like we got to drive by great gardens yeah for sure <laughs> they bought it and like renovated it right um i think that yes it's like the but it's barely the house that it was before you know like it's basically a new house at this point yeah in 2007 she became a cover girl Lash like, Blash Fusion Mascara, baby. Oh, like a literal cover girl. Like yeah. Easy Breezy. Easy Breezy, Drew Breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> I watched okay. all these commercials. They're super cute. Oh, cute. She Can you do her little lisp, May? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I was. <laughs> I could only do like flower films. <laughs> <laughs> um in 2008, she started an on again, off again relationship with comedian Justin Long. Who was I hot for like forgot, a second. I forgot they were together. Yeah, he has a really interesting dating life. Is he, he's younger than her or do I just always feel like she's older than she is? No, he's younger than her. Yeah, because she's one of those people that's been around for so long. She seems like she's older than she yeah. actually is. Because she was famous so fucking little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, he is younger than her though. So it seems like she's into funny goose, right? <laughs> yeah 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 that's the thing right like for every girl in the fucking world um he, but he seems he seems like a decent guy like he seems like a nice yeah dude. for sure yeah he seems like a puppy <laughs> he's like um he's like if joseph gordon levitt were not joseph gordon levitt <laughs> <laughs> less cute and more funny yeah maybe yeah Okay, so in the current 2010 decade, she kept it moving with her acting career, starring in Big Miracle with John Krasinski and blended with her work husband to Adam Sandler again. Oh. Both of those movies are kind of whack. All right. <laughs> and blended is definitely whack compared to 50 First Dates and The Wedding Singer, but uh -huh. because she and Adam Sandler are, are already a loved on-screen couple, it was still a like gigantic commercial success. Okay. I got an Adam Sandler tidbit. One time uh, I was at a bar with my cousins mm -hmm. and Jose was like, I'm going to buy a round. I'm going to buy a round. What do you want? And I was like, oh, I was drinking Tom Collins. So mm -hmm. I was like, can I get a Tom Collins? And he made this fucking like he squished his face at me like, what the fuck? And then he went up to the bartender and he's all drunk and shit. And he was like, yeah, my cousin wants an Adam Sandler. <laughs> 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 he was just like what the fuck is a tom <laughs> Collins? the fuck <laughs> you know, <man. laughs> okay in 2011 she began dating art consultant will copelman okay and they were engaged in 2012 and married that same year he's hot as hell really yeah they're a hot couple but i think so i was looking at pictures of them and i don't think that pictures do him justice you gotta watch like a paparazzi video of them because he's okay. like he's tall and he moves in a great like he's got swag <laughs> okay he moves like a human and <laughs> he's got arms and legs <laughs> it's all working for him okay uh they have two daughters together born in 2012 and 2014 and in 2016 they unfortunately divorced oh yeah okay. so most recently our homegirl drew has been starring in the netflix series santa clarita diet a single camera show which she also produces Mm -hmm. It's about her and her husband and her descent into zombiehood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen it, but you said it's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I did not expect to like it, but it's pretty good. And her husband on that show, Timothy 
Oliphant, I think is his name. Uh huh. He's he's fine as fuck on that show. Wow. Like, like uh, I don't I don't use the word daddy, but like, ooh, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people daddy. say zaddy? Zaddy. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Is that out of respect to their actual father? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that's not it, but I'm gonna start saying that that's what it is. Yep, that's it. That's your Baymar. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, dude, her life isn't that dramatic. I told you, it's just fun and simple. And she dated a lot of hot guys and been in a lot of movies. And she's cool as fuck. Is she dating anyone right now? Do we know? No, I don't think so. Okay, because I saw like very recent articles, and she just talks about being a mom and stuff. That's why mm-hmm. she said that she's not really acting as much anymore because like mom roles aren't that fun, and she likes to act like you know like herself. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's why she's more like producing and just going r- that route. All right, Drew. Yep. Our little she's- Daisy Drew had a little Daisy Easy episode. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's another person who's not problematic at all like just you know she had she went through her shit and she dealt with it yep. and she came out on top and good for her never does anything wrong about like other people and mm-hmm. she stays in her lane and yeah yep Ah, drew we love you <laughs> drew uh be sure to catch drew barrymore on santa clarita diet <laughs> on netflix netflix <laughs> Well, boys and girls, what have we learned? Have these stories taught us anything? First, we've learned never to accept gifts from strangers. Nothing at all, not even candy. It's really very easy to say, no thank you. And you never go anywhere with a stranger. Next, you should never let a stranger put his arm around you or touch you. And no matter what story a stranger may tell you, you never get into his car. Don't forget, hitchhiking is asking for a ride with a stranger, and that's really asking for trouble. If we remember to write down the license number of any car we're suspicious of, it might turn out to be very important. These are mostly things your parents and teachers have already told you. They know what they're talking about when they tell you that strangers can be dangerous. And that's the most important thing I wanted to tell you, too. If you all remember that, it'll be pretty hard to get into trouble. Well, kids, any questions? We got a, we got a personal quickie this week. <laughs> We got a personal quickie this week that we forgot to talk about last week. Yeah. So as you all know, we were in Vegas for a ve- very Vegas episode two mm-hmm. weeks ago, three weeks uh, ago. Go back and listen to episode Vegas, baby, if you haven't listened to it already. Yeah. If you want to know all about the Bunny Ranch. <laughs> and uh, we went out, uh, you know, as people do in Vegas. Yeah. We had several dozens, I would say. $16 cocktails. And I don't think that this happens to every... Yeah, that was making me so fucking mad. I was like, god damn, every cocktail was like $18. I don't know why, like, from 14 to 18 just seems ridiculous to me. No, you're right. Like, a $14 I, cocktail, I'm like, worth it. <laughs> I will say, though, that almost every single cocktail we had that night was pretty fucking good. Yeah, they were all great. The ones at Esther's Kitchen were really good. Esther's Kitchen, oh, if you go yeah. to Vegas, get off the strip and go to Esther's Kitchen. That restaurant's fantastic. Yes. And also go to the uh what's the the chandelier bar that we went to? Yeah, at the Cosmopolitan. At the Cosmopolitan, go to the chandelier bar and also and call get- our friend Tiffany and ask if you could go to her apartment. <laughs> 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 and her um and her man Edward will pick you up in yeah, a car. He picked us up. <laughs> that was really sweet. <laughs> so um, we were we were like literally dozens of cocktails deep. Yep. And then we went to a club underneath the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yep. Because we're fancy as fuck. And we're just dancing, <laughs> getting our drink on when mm-hmm. I don't think this happens to everybody in Vegas, but you ran into someone. Yes, I ran into um my friend Mike who also lives in Vegas and he had a table and they so had bottle we service there to take shots <laughs> and keep dancing and keep dancing and the things were going great. Yep. <laughs> things were going great. 
So then Mike is like, come back to my place and let's, you know, keep this moving. And, right. and like Drew Barrymore in the 90s, we were with it. We were like, let's do this. <laughs> we put daisies in our hair and, and got in the <laughs> Uber and we were on our way, on our merry way. So we're at this dude's house, drinking, having a great smoking, time. Straight West Coasted. <laughs> <laughs> and may little drunk may took off yeah. her shoes at one point yep i just put i took off my shoes in my friend's house like any normal person would do and we kept the party going we were drinking so then Listening at one point music. you just like you were you just died like <laughs> yeah you literally like, we were all sitting at the bar and then you were just like i'm done you went to the couch and like laid down and you were barefoot and i was like oh fuck we gotta go because we gotta go that was your friend like i can't be <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. No. and also you guys should know this is what happens to me every time i drink too much yeah like, suddenly I just... you're just like i'm done and then die yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so I called the Uber and then the Uber gets there in like five seconds. And then in the five seconds that I called the Uber and May died, <laughs> this guy, Mike's roommate came home with two girls mm -hmm. right? and the girls were very pleasant to us. Yeah, they, they were, were like, cute and nice and friendly. And yeah, they, they were like, Oh my God, you guys are so cute. Like you guys should hang out with us. We just got here. Blah, blah, blah. Very nice girls. So I'm trying to get may in the uber and i can't find her shoes and mike can't find her shoes and we can't find your fucking shoes but the uber <laughs> is like I, there and we're i'm like we gotta fucking go so i just we go and you're barefoot i'm i'm barefoot i'm this is the sloppiest i've ever been in vegas relax actually, no <laughs> I, actually i just i remembered that other time <laughs> so uh whatever May, may's barefoot i got her in the uber we get to the hotel room we go to sleep it's a wrap the next mm -hmm. morning we wake up and we're like getting ready to go back home start the trek back to downtown and uh we passed by mike's place to pick up your shoes <laughs> and okay so mike is like yeah i i saw your shoes just give me a second to go grab them so we're waiting outside of his house and he's looking everywhere i'm guessing and he comes back outside and he's like you guys are not going to believe this those girls stole your shoes <laughs> <laughs> because he found them like after we left in the uber he found them he was like oh here's me shoes and like showed them to everybody and then put them down and then <laughs> and then those girls left with our shoes <laughs> are your shoes what like on what planet does this happen vegas baby <laughs> <laughs> my shoes got stolen yeah so me they were sam stolen. They were Sam Edelman nude pumps. Aww. If anyone wants to send me some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> you can mail them to 555-555 Kristen Wig Drive. <laughs> well, I just, uh, we if you guys follow us on Twitter, we talked about it on Twitter and people were like, what? Like, go fuck them up or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> we can't do that. No, that's it's not our style. But to be honest, I respect her. Really? Yeah, she's. I only respect her because it's funny to me that you got your shoes stolen. <laughs> it was, dude. Okay, and when we were driving away from Mike's house that morning, like we we could not stop laughing about it for like a solid fifteen minutes. Yeah, like, we're just who the fuck steals someone's shoes? Uh, so what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, as well, well as your shoes, including your shoes, my shoes. So, R.I.P. Nude Sam Metalbin pumps. We had a good run. <laughs> 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 however, whatever with your helmet.